are we all? Welcome back to my October favourites. I'm going to try and say the correct month throughout the whole video because I'm never able to do that. I think in my September favourites, I'll link that up here for you, um, I interchange September and I think August, possibly October too, threw that into the mix, but this is my October favourites. I'm going to do the usual thing, which I haven't done in a while actually. I'm going to show you my skincare, beauty, style, and then also some random favourites at the end too. So let's get started with skincare. That is a good look. Kind of looks a bit like a mullet when I have this bit popping up at the end. Um, but skincare, I have to say, I am so, so, so chuffed with my skincare routine this month. I feel like my skin is looking pretty good actually. It's quite like glowy. I've managed to get rid of these. I was having these breakouts around like the corners of my nose and my chin and they were real under the skin kind of ones that never really came to a head and were just painful and bruisey and I've worked out what was causing them. Um, I think for me, I need more of a gel-based cleanser in my life. I was using the May Lindstrom Skin, the Pendulum Potion, which is basically an oil cleanser. Like you pump it out, it's an oil. And before that I was using the Emma Hardy. Um, I've never found it with the Oscar, I feel like that is an oil kind of, but it's kind of a gel at the same time. And um, But using like a full on oil cleanser was just, it was the one thing that I changed in my routine and when I took it out, my skin like basically cleared up like that. I feel like I just need a gel. I need something that, I don't want it to strip the skin, but I just want it to leave it very like neutral. I don't necessarily need that step to add oil back into my skin. I still use oils, I use oil at the end of my routine, but I feel like using it at the beginning was a bit, overkill. So with that in mind, I took the May Lindstrom out. I've also been using the Drunk Elephant um, Best Number no. 9 Jelly Cleanser. This was really good too. I really enjoyed that. However, there is another cleanser. I feel like I've found a lot of good cleansers this year, um, but this one, oh, I don't know. I sort of went like, wow, when I started using it. It's from Kiehl's. It is their Centella Sensitive Facial Cleanser. I have sensitive skin. And this is basically a gel cleanser. Like, it looks very much like the um, Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. I would say the Milky Jelly Cleanser is like a slightly less nourishing version of it, but it's also a lot cheaper. So if you want a good dupe, get that. If you want something that's a little bit more nourishing on the skin, this is perfect. It's like a gel, but once you start massaging it into your face, it has so much slip to it. It doesn't like cling to your face at all. So I feel like you got a really good cleanse out of it whilst it also like doesn't strip your skin. So I just put it on. It says to remove it with a cotton pad. Ooh, gross, no way. I'm gonna use one of my muslin cloths to rinse it off. But the main thing I love about rinsing it off is it comes off so easily. And I really did enjoy the Drunk Elephant one, but it wasn't until I started using this that I realized that the Drunk Elephant one was like a bit soap suddy. I feel like it kind of, started to like soap up on my face and get a lather and actually it was quite hard to fully remove. But this, I can just do like a really light wipe on my skin and I'm like, yeah, I feel like that's all come off. Um, so majorly, majorly into that cleanser. Well done, girls. I've just finished off my routine because um, actually the next thing that I'm gonna mention, I'm not gonna put on my face right now because it's an evening product for me and I'm getting ready for the day now. It is the Drunk Elephant TLC Glycolic Night Serum. Um, I've been working with Drunk Elephant and Space NK. This is not sponsored. I absolutely love this product. I would happily go buy it with my own money. In fact, I have gone out and bought the miniature of it with my own money because I think it's so, so fab. Um, I love Caroline, obviously. I think she's absolutely fab and she is such a big proponent of having acids in your skincare routine and I've sort of dabbled with them on and off. I've done bits, I've done bobs. I've never used anything like consistently in my routine for like months and months and months and months in the acid realm. Um, last month I did mention the Prism. I'd still recommend it as a product. I still use it but this serum is something else. This is like a different way of using acids. Before I'd sort of done an acid as like a, a spritzy sort of step, like after my cleanser I'd thrown on an acid and then a hydrating kind of spritz. This is adding it to more like the serum step and actually I do mix it when I use it with the Drunk Elephant B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum. I mix them together, then I throw it on my face before I finish off with an oil in the evening. But I have just noticed such a difference using this and actually using the um, the vitamin C one as well during the day. Using this serum has left my skin so 
smooth and when I wake up in the morning I look in the mirror I'm like oh my word like the glow that you get because it has got rid of that dry skin I'm always hastened to mention skincare things I haven't been using for like months and months and months but I have been using this for around six weeks now and like I said I just I actually noticed a difference so soon after I started using it, I was just really, really impressed. I've been using it every night. I think it's supposed to work up to that gradually. Um, oops. Um, I found that using the hydrating serum and using the oil on top sort of worked as a barrier and like took the edge off a little bit. So I haven't had any problems with dryness or irritation. Um, yeah, I'm just really in a really good place with my skincare right now and after quite a few months of having these breakouts and having actually quite a lot of like blemishes and spots on my chin around my nose it feels amazing to actually have none like it's been a long time let me tell you and i really credit it to using that in my routine and helping with any texture issues that i've got my skin is looking really red in the viewfinder but i can assure you it's mainly because i'm really hot right now I'm wearing a massive uh, chunky knit and actually it's quite a warm day so apologies for looking like a bit of a tomato. Um, I wanted to show you, it's not technically a bathroom product but I wanted to show you it here, um, the Commodity Bergamot um, Perfume. Commodity are a brand that are available on Space NK, their fragrances are really quite stunning and I'm not a fragrance person, so many of them make me feel quite ill. Um, I tried their like wardrobe collection or something where it's like loads of the mini little tester ones and I sprayed them all, wore them all, got to try them out. Some of them were a bit too strong for me but the majority of them I actually found really really pleasant but this was my favourite one. It's a gorgeous like citrusy fresh scent and I picked up two of the travel ones this month which might seem a little bit outrageous and it kind of is um but i've always had my travel beauty bits like packed and ready to go in a suitcase which makes me sound like i think i'm some kind of superstar that's like traveling around the world constantly i'm not i've got like one trip planned for the rest of the year my next video should be winging its way to you from copenhagen which is very exciting um but i've always had this like kind of long haul beauty bag ready to go that's had like hair care and like a bag for the plane and body care and just skincare the whole lot but recently we've been going on trips that have just been cabin bag only and obviously there are restrictions with liquids when it comes to that and every single time I would panic and be like there's no way I'm gonna fit all my liquids that I need in this like, little bag. This is from Space and K by the way, would highly recommend. And so I decided that instead of stressing out before every trip, I would just like create a bag that was just ready to go, that had everything that I needed in. I've actually even packed makeup in this as well. This is everything that I need. Um, shout out to the mini Mitch and deodorants that I found on Amazon. I'll link those down below for you. I am so chuffed with those. Um, this is the drunk elephant that I spoke about. I bought the travel kit. I wouldn't recommend buying the travel kit. It's very, very, very expensive when you break down like the price per mil, but it does mean that you get like cute little ones that you can travel with. I just couldn't bear the thought of not traveling without it. Um, and I thought for a travel fragrance, I would pick up these and just have them ready to go. So um, yeah, really highly recommend if you're looking for travel fragrances because they do every single fragrance they do as a travel one available on the Space NK website and that is hard to come by like more brands need to do this guys um, but yeah let me know if you'd like to see like what is in here because it literally is everything you could ever possibly want for a weekend away. On to makeup and actually I've got the majority of my makeup on my face right now but of course I have some monthly favourites to show you but let's get started with a brush and <laughs> this is the Zoeva Lux Grand Powder Brush. Um, I realised the other day that majority of brushes that I use day to day are Zoeva brushes. I think they're absolutely fab. If you would like me to do a capsule brush collection, let me know. I keep them all in this little thing from Muji. I don't know how many there is there. Maybe 12? Is that a lot of brushes? Is that big or small? I'm not really sure. I mean, I guess there's some people who probably just have a beauty blender and leave it at that. But this brush is such a gorgeous bronzer brush. I love that you can basically just do your bronzer in like two minutes. You go like dust, 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 we're done. Um, so I really thoroughly enjoy this brush. If you're gonna buy three brushes from Zoeva, I would recommend this one. I'd recommend the 104 Buffer brush and I would recommend the one that I've got an absolute load of, the 228 Lux Crease Brush. Um, it's just the best eyeshadow brush. It's what I used to get this look on my eyes today. If you would like to see like this makeup, it's basically my makeup from my last video. So I will link that up here if you wanna check that out. Um, but my second favourite is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit in Unlocked. Again, I mentioned that in that video. And I just think, sorry, I wasn't even going to show you there. Um, I think this is just an absolutely fab 
powder palette. I know they've brought out another one, which I think is their Christmas edition, um, but to me that looks a little bit more glittery and a little bit paler in the colours. I feel like this is going to suit more skin tones. It just has a little bit more pigment to it and sort of a bit more of like a warm, earthy tone to it. So I'm just mixing the middle top row and the right top row shade. The right top row is the bronzer, so I'm just mixing the bronzer with a bit of one of the finishing powders. I'm gonna take my Bobbi Brown sheer powder brush, take some of the highlights from my skin. Um, I'm not gonna do the blush today because I'm having a really hot moment <laughs> in this in this jumper. What was I thinking? Let's have a quick talk about lip colour because I again have something that I showed in my previous video, the Fenty Beauty Stunner Lip Paint in Unbutton. If you want to see it in action, check out that video. I just think the shade of it is gorgeous but I also have been enjoying the Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet in the shade Emotive. I love Chanel lipsticks, I just don't think you can beat them in terms of the formula and how like Oh, they just feel like so luxurious on your skin, really pillowy, really delicate, and really great shades. I just think that is such a nice colour. That's a very good wedding day colour, I think, because it's like a little bit pinky. It's like kind of warm, but pinky enough so that your teeth don't look too yellow. Mm. Love, love, love. I mean, and the packaging. Mm. Okay, style. I feel like these picks will come as no shock to you if, oh, I think it's in the wash. Damn it. I'll just insert a little photo of it here, um, but what I was trying to say was I don't think these picks will come as any big surprise. They're what I've been wearing all month on Instagram, Instagram stories, just in my real life all the time. I mentioned this particular thing that I'm going to mention first in my autumn capture wardrobe haul video, so I'll link that up there for you. It is the And Other Stories Green Relaxed Fit Cashmere Jumper. It is absolutely glorious. The fit of it is beautiful. It's just like a nice like boxy, baggy, but not too baggy um, fit that looks really good, tucked into jeans, um, really flattering, comes in gorgeous colours. I think it comes in a navy blue as well and like a nude, um, but I'm over the moon with the bottle green. I've got so much wear out of it. Really, really happy, really impressed, really impressed with the quality. It washes really well too. I just do it on a cool hand wash in the machine um, with some like cashmere specific wash and it comes out perfectly. So would highly, highly recommend. The second thing I wanna mention are the Acne Studios Jensen boots. I picked these up a year, a year ago, two years ago. I feel like it, maybe it was two years ago now. Um, and I just think they're a really fab boot. This style of boot, this sort of like pointy Chelsea boot, I get so much wear out of. They're flat, so they're just very easy to wear, they're very comfortable to wear. And they weren't comfortable when I first got them, they definitely took a little bit of uh, breaking in, breaking in, there, we got them on the end. It's a Friday when I'm filming this, can you tell? <laughs> but now they're like wearing slippers, and I just find that having this style in your wardrobe, if you're a fan of neutrals and minimal style, these basically go with anything. Um, I think Ander Stories also have a really good dupe in for the moment, and they are leather as well. I'll link those down below for you. My final favourite, I've actually just got out the wash, um, so they're hanging up and damp on the uh, on the clothes horse. Don't really want to put those on right now, so again, I'll just do a little thing here. They are from Topshop. They are the raw hem straight leg jeans, you know, the ones that I'm always wearing. They're like a new wash. Um, it's really hard to make sure that I link up the right ones down below online. It's really hard to like make sure they match up. Um, but it's this really gorgeous, like I've got these ones, but they're not as blue as this. They're more bleached, they're paler. Um, I will try and find the right correct link for them down below. But I'm really enjoying that paler wash and I think it suits the bottle green like and other stories knit really well. I think it suits things like the mustard in my wardrobe really well, the tan really well. Um, it's just kind of nice to wear something a bit paler on the bottom instead of wearing black jeans all the time. On to some random favourites and we're going to get started with books. I love like checking in with books. Like let me know what you're reading because I feel like you guys always have really good recommendations. So pop a comment down below. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know what I should read next. If ever you want to check in with what I'm reading currently, books that I've read this year, check out my good reads. I have completed my 2018 reading challenge. I've read over 12 books. I'm over the moon. But the two that I've read this month that I've really thoroughly enjoyed and were both really quick reads for me because they were just that good. Um, the first one is Sally Rooney, Normal People. Um, I really love Sally Rooney books. I think they're beautifully written. They're very simply written with complex characters and just really interesting and different stories. Um, 
this is like kind of a bit of a love story. It's like a relationship story between a boy and girl who meet at school and then each chapter like follows them over the years. Um, it's quite deep, it's very complex, it addresses issues like depression, abusive relationships, power in relationships, control in relationships. Um, yeah, so it, it kind of isn't as simple as it seems when you start reading it, it's just a really beautiful story that takes like a lot of twists and turns and you're not really sure where it's going to end up and I won't want to ruin anything for you so I will leave that there but I can definitely recommend. Um, the other one I read in two days, like almost less than two days, about 36 hours. What a read. Um, it's Lily Allen's My Thoughts Exactly which is kind of, I think she says it's not a memoir but it's just her writing about all the experiences that she's had in her life so far and whoa what a life, like what a, I've always kind of liked Lily Allen um, because she got really big when I was like around a similar-ish age to her. I'm probably like four, my four years younger than her, five years younger than her. But I remember Smile being such a hit. I remember her first album being on my iPod. I would listen to Littlest Things when I'd broken up with my boyfriend and just thought it was like the most heartbreaking song ever. I'd listen to it on the 5B bus. People from Brighton, you know, 5B bus, that was my bus. And I'd sit on that bus just pretending that I was in a music video, listening to that, like being really heartbroken. Um, she's had a very, again, up and down sort of life. I think she talks about fame in a very real and tangible way. I can really understand how that feels for her, the way she writes about it. You're like, yep, yeah, I get it, that sounds pretty shit. Also amazing, but also shit at the same time. Um, and the celeb stories in this, you're like, I, I was about 10 pages in and I said to a friend, oh, I'm reading the Lily Allen book, she's name dropped about 20 celebs already. It's not name droppy in like a I'm better than you kind of way, but she has had, in a very weird way, a very celeb -y life, um, given that she was born to parents who weren't very celeb -y at the time. Um, yeah, she's had a, a crazy old life, old Lily. Um, if you're a fan of her work or you just want to read an interesting story about like pop and stardom and all those sorts of things, I would recommend this very highly. I'm actually gonna send this now to my friend who lives in Amsterdam because she wanted to read it. So I will be sending that to her. Um, yeah, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed those books this month. My second favorite, guys, I upgraded my phone. I upgraded my phone after three years and I've been getting Instagram DMs like, what phone did you get? I'm like, it's not very exciting, but I did get the XS Max. Um, I think that's the one, the big one. I've never had the big phone before. I have to say, why did I have the small phone all the time? The big phone is great. You see everything bigger. Like you can see more on a page. Um, you're watching YouTube is a more enjoyable experience because it's just bigger and better. And in this case, bigger is better. I really, really like it. And actually the battery life, that's the whole reason I've never gone for the bigger one before. Um, because they don't make like the extra battery packs for the big ones because they say that the battery life is better. And I would say the battery life on this is far superior to any other phone that I've had, like, I spend a lot of time on my phone and I can get to the end of the day still and not have to charge up my phone throughout the day um, and still have battery left. So that is great. Speaking of charging, um, my dad bought me this. Thanks, dad. I gave my mum my old phone, so my dad was like, oh, I bought one of these for you as a thank you. Um, it's one of the Belkin, like, charging pads. Um, it does have a plug-in, I've just unplugged it, but you basically just put your phone on it like that and it charges wirelessly. Mark doesn't get these, he's very old school. He's like, just, you know, just plug it in like a normal person. Um, and he is right, you know, you can just plug it in like a normal person, but when you're tired at night and you're trying to just like, like trying to do it in the dark, it's actually really nice just to be able to like, put it on and go like that. I'm really thoroughly impressed. Mark isn't, um, I think they're really cool. I think these are the future. Dad, if you're watching, look away now because I'm gonna show my underwear online. <laughs> and which, when I showed underwear online before, people were like, thank you so much. They are the best darn thongs ever. Yes, I know, they're from Victoria's Secrets. I'll link them down below. If you want a comfortable thong, oh my word, they are amazing. FYI, the thongs from this brand, not great too tight, probably did buy the wrong size, but they're just, there's a lot of elastic in them, I don't know, I wasn't crazy about them. Um, I mentioned in the video where I picked up the Fenty Beauty stuff um, that through searching for that online, I discovered Rihanna's underwear brand. I think it's called Savage X Fenty, Savage Fenty? Not 100% sure. I'd seen hype around it, I'd seen it on her Instagram, I'd seen it online, but I hadn't seen it like available for purchase. And I didn't realize that it was available on Harvey Nicks along with her makeup brand, which I think is the only place in the UK, aside from her site, where you can buy it. However, um, if you go on the actual website, you're able to get all these amazing deals. I think you can get like two bras for £39. 
I realized it had been a really, really, really long time since I bought a bra and my bras were like falling apart. It was disgusting. I think they were like from when I first met Lily. Cause I remember one of the first times I met her, we went to the Calvin Klein store and like each bought a bra and that was a really long time ago now. Um, so I thought I'll buy some bras, see what they're like. And actually I like every single one um, that I bought. I don't wear underwired bras. I've got no tits. I don't care about making a cleavage. Like I just want them to be comfortable. Um, and I don't need that much support because there's not really that much there to support. But I picked up two different styles and um, I'll link them down below for you. This is like the more like higher coverage style. Um, I picked them up in a, I think I picked them up in a small and I'm around a 34B I think. And they fit perfectly. And then I bought a really like slinky, whoa, okay. <laughs> Oh, I bought a really lacy one. I like lacy black bras. Um, this one, obviously the coverage on it isn't great, the support on it isn't great, but this one, I'm actually super impressed with the coverage and the support. So they're kind of a bit different. I bought a nude one in the lacy one as well, and then I bought a navy one in the fuller cup one, um, so I've got like two of each. And I think, yeah, they were 39 pounds when you buy two. That's like 80 quid for four bras, that's not bad. And when I told my friends about this, they were like, yeah, yeah, Anna, we don't care because they won't do them in our size. Her sizing is amazing. It is such a huge range of sizes and I think that's so great that it's such a good price for bras of all shapes and sizes. So thank you Rihanna for making not only amazing lip paints and highlighters and lip glosses and all the other things you do, but also amazing underwear. But that is it. Those are my October favorites. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I think I'm gonna do kind of what we did in Amsterdam last time because we're visiting Copenhagen this week. So hopefully if the Wi-Fi in the hotel is good enough, I will upload you a vlog, like a day in the life in Copenhagen vlog whilst we're out there. So yeah, Copenhagen recommendations. Let me have them. I would love to know places that you recommend, food, museums, wandering around, just general places to visit. That would be incredible. So yeah, I will see you then next week. Have a good one. Bye.